It was January 19, 2017. I was standing on stage, baton in my hand, and the music was about to start. Seconds later, along with Nagin Khbulwag, I was conducting Afghanistan's first female orchestra in Davos, Switzerland. Our stage was at the World Economic Forum. We are international politicians, businessmen and businesswomen, economists, activists, and live in front of the world as the first female conductors and orchestra of Afghanistan. The Zohra Orchestra, this is us. All the girls in this picture are from different parts of my homeland, and each one of them has a unique story behind this success. They reflected a different reality of my country with its hopes and disappointments. The first female orchestra. Even now, two years later, when I say those words, I get the same excitement and courage when I was standing in front of the orchestra. I remember the first piece I conducted was called Watanjon, which means Dear Homeland. And before starting the music, I could feel the few seconds of silence, a complete silence, while everybody in the hall was waiting for us to play. That day, that silence taught me something. That once you get to know your worth, the world will stop talking and will listen to your voice. The majority of people listening and watching us were thinking of Afghanistan in the terms of warlords, Taliban, ISIS, illegal drugs, and suicide bombing. But that day, we, 29 girls, presented our country so beautifully and peacefully. We presented our country with our instruments and music. We presented another face of Afghanistan, which is beauty, courage, solidarity, strength, hope, and love. Because during my travels in Europe, the United States, and around Asia. People used to ask me different questions about Afghanistan, about the Taliban, about the war, about the fight. The first question I remember people asked me was, is Afghanistan safe? And my answer was a no, because Afghanistan is not safe. But as a youth of that country, I'm optimistic and hopeful that the youth and the new generation is going to create peace together and will uphold peace together, and I'm confident about it. But you know the most common question I get is that, is it really hard for women to leave there? And I'm stuck on this question every time I'm asked. After our, our European Orchestra tour, I thought about it deeply that, is it really hard for women to leave in Afghanistan or... Or is Afghanistan a bad place for, for, for women or for girls to be born? And I thought about it deeply. And the answer for this question is, unfortunately, a yes. Afghanistan is, it's very hard for women to live in Afghanistan. And this reminds me exactly times that I was told to get married, I was told to quit school, and I was told not to go to Turkey for a leadership program, I was told not to go to Yale University for a summer program, and I was told not to perform at the World Economic Forum. People tried to make me believe that I'm not able to do what I want to. Because of my dreams, my male cousins beat me. My very, very close relatives tried to force my mother to marry me off as soon as I came of age, otherwise I would be a sign of shame for the family. Many people said, Zarifa, sometimes you forget that you are a girl. But let me tell you something. The only thing that I have never forgotten is that I am a girl. And that's my strength. That's my power. My mother tells me that, Zarifa, you are living in a world where people will try to bring you down. But you have wings and you need to let them fly. Just by focusing on your goals and dreams, put aside, put aside all other things that can stop you. With these words, how can I not accept myself as an individual human being who has the right to live as a human, to, to live it lively, to do what I have always wanted to do, and to accept myself as a strong and empowered human being? But yes, 
There were times that I needed a hero. I needed someone to guide me, to help me, and to support me. And I was searching for that hero everywhere. In the face of my brothers, my uncles, my male cousins, my friends, celebrities, but I never thought that a woman could be my hero. Because I was taught that I'm less important than my brothers, my male cousins, and every single boy. I was taught that men are stronger, more powerful, and the leaders. At first, I was always questioning why, why is it like this? But eventually, I also began to believe that maybe this so-called conventional knowledge is true. I didn't have such heroes, but I had great role models. My grandmother, my mother, and my aunt Mahjibin. Three women, three women who were always there with me and for me. My mother kept it secret that my aunt is taking me to music school. And my grandmother told me to believe in myself, to be true to myself, have faith in God, and work hard. Though she was always worried that I'm living in a country where a female Quranic scholar was brutally bitten and was burned alive in the street by an angry mob, and where girls are stoned to death by the Taliban. But my grandmother had faith in me. UNICEF has reported recently that my country, Afghanistan, is one of the most dangerous places for girls to be born. This has been really tough, but my experiences have made me resilient and strong. But my experiences have made me strong and resilient. And now I know that girls are strong enough to live anywhere on the face of the earth. And some phenomenal women from my country, Afghanistan, have proven this. Brishna Musazai. Rishna Musazai was shot three times when terrorists attacked her university, the American University of Afghanistan. She received her degree last year. Another is Fatima Qadirian. She's just 14 years old, but she's the captain of first female robotic team of Afghanistan who has given an incredible speech in Oslo. Then there is Aryana Sayed, a singer who won 2018 Atlantic Council Freedom Award. And there are Journalists, photographers like, like Rada Akbar, Farahnaz Furotan, and Fatima Husseini. And of course, there's my friend Nagin Akhbulwag, the conductor, the fighter, and the hero. And there are thousands and thousands of strong and courageous women in my country who are working for their rights endlessly. We are from Afghanistan. We are from the same Afghanistan, the land of love and hope drawn into bloodshed. Despite the odds being stacked against me, I have used my viola, my bow, and my baton as tools for empowerment and freedom. Being a girl, I have often been told of limitations. But my gender, like my nationality, my culture, and my religion does not define me does, and does not restrict me. It has never stopped me of dreaming. I've never stopped dreaming. And I have turned my dreams into my life. And now I want to help others do the same. And now I want to fight for girls to study music without risking their lives. I want to fight for girls to play sports anywhere and at any time, free from the fear that a man might harass them. I want to fight for girls to go to school and study. And I have found that spirit inside of me. So find that spirit inside of you that makes you capable of achieving what you want. And that does not just spark the fire, but will inspire girls to be their own hero. Thank you so much.